How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Nat Automotive channel and in today's video I wanted to show you guys some of the research that I've been doing around C5 Corvettes going at auction and how much they go for based on their condition. So if you guys have watched my past few videos on the channel, you'll know that just recently I announced a the next big project for the channel. It is a street legal go-kart based off of a C5 Corvette. And recently I've been really looking hard at getting a good deal on a C5 Corvette at an insurance auto auction. Um, so recently in the past video, you'll have seen that I went out and actually checked out a Corvette in person at the Copart San Diego lot. Unfortunately, there was a little bit too much damage on it um, for what I was wanting and just a little bit too much of risk, even though I did see it in person. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely go check it out because it's pretty cool, um, you know, seeing what the Copart yard is like if you've never uh, been there before. Um, but in this video, I wanted to show you guys some of the other C5 Corvettes that I've been kind of keeping my eye on um, over the past few weeks and what they've been going for at auction based on their condition. So what I did was, because um, a lot of the times these auctions happen at weird hours of the day, so I did just kind of do screen recordings on my iPhone and what I'm going to do is pull up those screen recordings and kind of just voice over those things for you guys and kind of talk about, you know, the, cor the car itself, the condition and how much it went for in the end. Okay, so we're back on the laptop here doing a screen recording. So basically what I have here is a compilation of all sorts of different cars, um, C5 Corvettes, of course, that went at auction recently that I've been kind of monitoring. Um, and if you kind of watched the, the past video at the very end with the blue C5 Corvette, I kind of did the same thing. I, I was curious to see what that car was going to go for at auction. And if I remember correctly, it went for 4650 bucks, and it said it actually sold to someone in Germany. I don't know if that's just how they registered their, you know, Copart account or whatnot, but that was pretty crazy. So that, you know, kind of helped get a good idea of how much that car went for. That car only had, like, 21 or 24,000 miles on it. I'll have to look back, but it was really low mileage. Um, but again, there was that whole issue with the undercarriage damage with the oil pan, which is what made the car an enhanced vehicle and why it wasn't able to be started. So I'll start with this first one here. Now I apologize again, this little weird uh, video recording format, but I had to just do screen recordings because sometimes these auctions happened when I was at work or at school. So um, you know, I kind of just had to make with what I had. So the first one we're looking at here is a 99 uh, C5. This one's actually a fixed roof coupe, which if you don't know Corvettes very well, a fixed roof coupe does not have the removable target top up here. And this is kind of like the predecessor to the Z06 in the later model years for the C5. Believe it or not, I mean, this will be a whole nother video for itself, but believe it or not, the fixed roof coupe is supposed to be the affordable man's Corvette. It's supposed to be kind of like the base model. And it ended up being a much more rigid chassis because of the fixed roof. So they turned it into the more performance oriented uh, model, the Z06, uh, later on. But, anyways, so that's a whole nother uh, topic there, another can of worms. So, this one is a 99. It has 141,000 miles on it, so fairly decent miles. I mean, these motors and these cars have been, you know, I've seen cars well over 200,000 miles, and they're still kicking strong, so that's not of a huge concern, but I would like a car with a little bit lower miles, but still, I'm going to see how much it goes for. So this one's for sale in Birmingham, Alabama, so for me, this one would be quite expensive to ship out here. Um, it is a pure sale. Um, so it, that means that whatever the highest bid is at the end of the live auction, you won the car. There's no any further pre-approval needed or, um, you know, just approval of the final price. It, it doesn't have a reserve on it per se. And it is a run and drive car. So that means that the car can be started, put in gear, drive forwards and put in reverse and drove backwards. At least that's what my understanding of run and drive is. And the current bid before the live auction started was 3350 so let's play the video here. So you can see this car kind of has some weird like aftermarket rims. Um, so, you know, not a fan of that, but oh well, it's not a big deal. So you can see this is where the main part of the accident was right in the rear here. So <clears throat> it definitely uh, probably that horizontal crash bar um, that is perpendicular to the length of the car at the very end 
most likely that thing is crunched and what my main concern is because this is such a deep impact it probably kinked the main frame rail really close to where this um, wheel mounts into the the frame rail so there could be some serious frame damage back there so that would be definitely something you would want to go in and try and look as best you can behind this wheel to see if you could see any damage and to be honest I'm surprised that this wheel is still looking pretty straight you know I'm not it's not like um, cocked one way or the other so that's the big area of damage here um, it has looks like an aftermarket exhaust that's kind of interesting yeah, I just zoomed in on the damage area to show you guys in more detail let's see oh yeah I was pointing out the <laughs> the horrible looking rims in this uh, on this car so the other side looks pretty good. Again, yeah, you can see the damage there. The other side looks good. Uh, interior looks fine. You know, nothing too crazy on the interior. Front end looks fine. You know that. Um, and this is the thing that confused me. I guess technically the 99 was a Z06 also, um, but I always thought that the Z06 officially started in 2001. Um, so that's that's a little interesting, but not getting too far into like history of Corvettes here. But another interesting point is that I just actually noticed now while I'm doing this video is like there's this little bit of like tape it looks like um, um, over part of the gauge here the speedometer so that's kind of interesting I don't know what that's covering but uh, it's a little suspicious so okay and then the radio was taken out so that's interesting so it could have been like uh, you know the person put in an aftermarket radio and then once the car got in an accident they took that thing out so that they could you know save that obviously um, I don't think this is a theft car but um, that's my guess is they just took out that radio before the auction so now let's actually go ahead and look at what the car went at because that was like um, oh, wrong one nope gotta find it here yeah here we go okay so here's the auction of the car so 3350 still no bids Okay, so then this guy from Oregon and Indiana come in, and they start bidding this thing up like crazy. Which is interesting because, you know, a lot of the times people that bid these cars really high up are closer to the car, you know, so because they don't have to pay a lot for shipping and whatnot. But Oregon, that's, that's a really far ways away, and Indiana's not, you know, much different either. But you can see the bid already is up $1,000 within like a minute, or within like 30 seconds even. So these people, oh wow, now, now it's up to 5,100. So, and bonus time, that's always nerve-wracking. So currently the high bid's from Indiana. <clears throat> oh, Oregon came back. Now I did record these, but I didn't actually watch them, so, because um, I was doing other stuff while these were recording, but... So this is me seeing him for the first time as well. So that 5,400, man, it keeps creeping up. Okay, I think it was, was it 5,400 was the final price? Yeah, it must have been 5,400 was the final price for that. So that's a decent high mileage car you know 5400 bucks so clearly I don't know if someone really wanted the fixed roof coupe or maybe because it was the technically a Z06 or pre Z06 I don't really know I thought all, like I said the Z06 has started in 2001 um, but that could be why it went for a little bit more than what I was expecting so now let's look at this next one this one was pretty interesting so this was a car from Florida in Tampa um, so it's a 2004 so it's the last uh, model year for the C5 so the newest one you can get it only has 62,000 miles on it so pretty low mileage for a 2004 It is a run and drive car um, and it is a pure sale so the final bid will be the uh, winner uh, at the live auction no pre no extra approval needed and the current bid before the live auction was 4150 so this car looks pretty decent in the front, but you can see off on the left, you know, behind the passenger side here, there is some decent damage and some stuff up in the front here too. That looks like there's some sort of hole, you know, punctured into the bumper and some scratches and whatnot. So let's go ahead and take a look around this car. So <clears throat> let's see. 
So this car has aftermarket wheels, which look pretty nice. Um, I'm pretty sure those are aftermarket. But you can see, okay, so here's the brutal part of the car where all the damage occurred. So someone probably rear-ended the car coming right this way, and obviously it cracked the bumper, shattered the taillights, um, and the, the big part that is a kicker for probably a lot of people on this one is this rear hatch and that whole glass is shattered this is completely bent that's all fiberglass so that's going to be all cracked everywhere this rear fender is total or um, total loss just because uh, you can see here it's kind of cracked and frayed along this line there's some damage to the exhaust there um, so interior looks fine you know other than like the shattered glass probably in the trunk interior looks in decent shape front end looks good you know aside from that little bit of damage on the front bumper there's a little bit of uh, like the cover that felt cover that comes underneath the hood it looks like that might be falling off but that's not a big deal um, so the engine area looks pretty decent nothing too crazy to talk about there again 62,000 miles so really low mileage okay so I'm gonna pause here so you can see that this fender was completely ripped off from I believe there's a kind of like a the rocker panel kind of continues up here and it was just completely severed off there you can see it was you know kind of just cracked and shattered right along that line um, so again here's another photo showing the rear hatch all cracked and I think the the layers there on the fiberglass are actually delaminated so that's not going to be fun to try and fix um, you can see kind of part of the muffler there as well, so that that's going to be um, you know obviously have to replace the exhaust, but you know, on these cars you want to do aftermarket exhaust anyways to make more awesome sounds. Um, but yeah, rear glass is all shattered, and uh, you know I it's just tough to tell based on these ten photos how extensive the damage is. Like this would be a car where you know it'd be really tough to you know guess what the overall damages underneath because you just want to know is that frame rail okay is that rear crash bar okay it's really tough to tell uh, we'll keep looking see if anything else pops out but the wheel still looks straight it doesn't seem like there's any suspension damage at, as of right now from the pictures um, yeah that rear glass is just total I'm guessing when this thing bent up it just torqued that glass a weird way and just shattered it um, but yeah, again, there's another photo of the or the muffler hanging down. I don't know if these are aftermarket wheels or if these are just recoded um, C5 five spoke star wheels. So that's pretty much it for this car as far as showing the damage. I was seriously considering getting this, um, obviously after having an inspector go out there and uh, check out the car. Um, but this car was pretty short notice. It came on Copart very soon and uh, soon after it had the auction date set and then it was all ready to go so it kind of happened really quickly um, I was really tempted to buy this car but I was afraid that there was going to be some sort of frame rail kink or bend you know farther in because all it takes you know if they hit the crash bar here you know the frame rail could kink farther down deeper into the car and the other thing I was concerned about was when I was when this auction was going on was right when one of the hurricanes was coming through Florida and so I know Copart does you know a fairly decent job with uh, wrapping open areas like with that plastic stretch wrap but I wasn't sure you know if this one was gonna get wrapped you know there was a big chance that I was gonna take because the car is all the way across the country and the, the big thing is is there's um, some electronics in the back here that I believe there's a fuse box I think in the back I'm not too sure but I just didn't want to take any risk of like any rain and water getting in the back here and just ruining this. So I still watched the auction just to see how much it went for because it was a low mile 04 C5. Um, but I didn't think I was going to actually bid on this one because it's a little bit high risk. Plus it's, um, you know, it was like $1,700 to ship it from Florida all the way to San Diego. So let's see, where is the video for that one? Okay, so here it is. So it's at forty-one fifty. Oh yeah, this is the one that I caught at the very last second. So I didn't have much time of watching the auction. But basically, I think no one else bid on it. The in, the final preliminary bid before the live auction was the final winning sell price. So this car went for forty-one fifty. 
um, even with all that damage in the rear. That motor is still really good. All the front end stuff is good. So, you know, if someone's got all those extra pieces in the back, this could be a really good candidate for their project car or just a rebuild. So, okay, let's go on to the next one. I think I've got a few more here. That was the Alabama one. Okay, here's another one. Let's see, where is that? That was the live auction. Maybe I didn't... I should be better prepared. Um... Oh, here's an... Okay, that was a different one. So anyways, I don't think I got any uh, video of this one before the live auction started, but this one was, again, an 04 um, C5 with a rear end damage. So you can see in the photo here, I apologize again if this is hard to see, but it was rear-ended here, and there was a little bit of uh, deformation in that rear crash bar, but someone dismantled the rear bumper, but it all looks pretty clean other than that. This hatch might be a little bit bent because of the weird shape or just the fact that it's not latching. I don't know. Um, but the big thing with this one is 23,000 miles. That is super low, especially for a 2004. So that is a great um, you know, candidate if you're just looking for powertrain components. But of course, you know, we're not just looking for the motor. We, we need a good car as a whole. We need the chassis to be in good condition and preferably the motor and trans as well. So this car is in Kentucky, um, and again, it would have cost me about $1,700 to ship it here. So I think the preliminary, final preliminary bid was about 5000 bucks. So we'll watch the live auction to see how much this thing goes for. And that's the problem with some of these cars when you're trying to bid from a car for a, you know, you know, like a longer ways away is people nearby, like in Ohio in this case, because that's really close to Kentucky or in Kentucky itself, they can bid up a lot higher because they don't have to pay for those shipping fees or you know they have their own means of transportation. So that can that's more money that they can put towards the final price of the car. So it's slowly creeping up here, 57, 5800. Um, so I think this is one of the more expensive ones that we've seen. Oh, bonus time. Gotta love that. 5,900. So this car is going for pretty decent, but I mean, the low miles, it's just crazy low miles for a 2004. I mean, that's essentially a new car pretty much. I always kind of consider a car, even with 20,000 miles, is still pretty dang new. Okay, so what was the final price there? I wasn't even paying attention. I think it was 6,100 or 6,000. Let's see. Yeah, 6,000. So. Sold for 6000 bucks for that one with super low miles, so that's another one there. So let's take a look at, oh, that was the Florida one. Again, I apologize for not being better organized. Okay, so this one I think I had actually recorded in person um, and not just done a screen recording on. So this was an O2 Corvette, and this one was in Connecticut, I believe. So, oops, so let's pause there for a sec. Let's rewind and pause. Okay, oh no, I was in New Jersey. Gosh darn it. Sorry guys, I apologize for being a little unorganized here. Okay, so let's pause. So you can see this car was some sort of front end damage, but it looks really clean. I mean, it looks like it was just all body damage and uh, they took all that off all the extra components around there and kind of cleaned it up and it looks like a really straight car uh, it's an O2 run and drive car 25,000 miles so again super low miles you can hear me talking here um, so it looks really clean uh, so the current bid was at 6200 oh and this one was in New York so still really far ways away this one would have cost me probably like $2,000 to ship it to San Diego. Um, but it was just a clean looking car. Uh, you know, only a little bit of front end damage. All that was taken off. It looks straight. The only thing here is nice that like they're not, they don't have this front bumper covering anything. Um, so sometimes they'll strap that front bumper back on and try and hide anything to make it look better than it is. So at least this way you know, you know, 
you're not being duped by having them cover it with a you know that bumper on the front there. So it looks uh, you know like a really good car. Um, wouldn't be able to bid on it though just because shipping it here all the way. Oh, and the door panel is missing, so not a big deal though. Um, but shipping it all the way from New York would definitely put a big dent in my budget, and you know that's less money I can put towards the price of the car that I can bid on it. So let's see. Okay, so here it comes. Let's fast forward. I've got this minivan in the way. Okay, I guess that was the wrong video. Okay. So here we go. So here's the O2. 6200 bucks current preliminary bid and it's in New York that is the high bidder so alright that was the final sell price no one else bid on it so 6200 someone must have really wanted that but it was an extremely low miles 2002 so pretty new in the uh, C5 model range um, okay that was the C5 in Kentucky okay so here's another one um, let me see if I have the video for this. I don't think I do, but that was the Birmingham one, Florida. Okay, so the last one here I got for you guys. This is a uh, 2000 C5 in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, this one had higher miles. Again, this one was a fixed roof coupe, um, and this one had 132,000 miles, and the only damage listed on the car was minor dent and scratches. So it was for fairly low damage. Um, so this one might go for a little bit more, but this one is on approval. So, and I think it was listed as a run and drive too. I don't know why it's not popping up there, but I'm pretty sure this one was a run and drive as well. So current bid at the live auctions 2850. So again, you see, you're you're competing mostly with people from that area where the car is. So if you're, uh, like I've said many times, if you're a ways away, you're at a disadvantage, um, just because of shipping and everything. So like again, this one car, this car probably would have cost two thousand dollars to ship it. So what was the final price? For three thousand fifty bucks. So not too bad, even though it had higher miles and it was a fixed roof coupe. Some people sometimes those are a little bit more desirable. Uh, than others just because of their rarity. I don't think they made as many. Oh, that was the video from the other Corvette. So I think that's going to do it um, for all the auction cars. That's all the ones that I have uh, saved up at the moment right now. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video in regards to the C5 Corvette auction research I've been doing for these online auction sites. I hope you guys enjoyed the content in regards to kind of doing this investigative work around these cars and learning the market for the C5 Corvettes. I've done a ton more research off camera, but this is just some of it that I wanted to share with you guys because um, I'm trying to do this to best prepare myself so that when I do see the car that my guts just tell me that's the one, I know exactly how much I should pay for it and how much I should you know kind of tap out at if I do get in a bidding war with someone because you know there's a lot of things to consider given the damage of the car the extent of the damage the miles and condition of the car and the location so you kind of want to create that price that is kind of your maximum bid so that you know you don't end up paying way too much than you expected for a car and of course there's other factors to consider like the manual transmission Corvettes often fetch a little bit more money because there's a lot fewer of them compared to the automatics there's always tons of automatics at an online at the online auctions so the manuals are a lot harder to come by um, especially ones that you know fit your bill to exactly what you want so that's what I'm doing just preparing myself as best I can so when the one comes up I know exactly what to do so I hope you guys enjoyed this if you guys have any comments or questions about this process like the kind of the copart buying process I'm not an expert in it um, I don't do it as a job on the daily but I have learned a lot over the past few months of preparing for this so I'd be happy to answer your comments or questions if you guys haven't already definitely subscribe to the channel for this content coming I'm so excited for this new project for the channel it's gonna provide a lot of really cool content for you guys to watch so if you haven't already haven't already definitely subscribe because it's it's gonna be fun I'm really excited to produce this content for you guys so thanks again guys for watching and I will see you in the next one